Women here have to get up at five to go wait in line for sometimes two hours just to get water to cook and let their family bathe. There's no running water in their homes. They're honestly worried about where they're gonna get enough money to buy a $2 medicine, but there's no money, there's no way for her to care for her family. You know, many of them were just bitter about everything in their life because their lives were completely broken up. Some of them had to kill their own husbands. Some of them saw their children be murdered in front of their eyes. A horrific things have happened. Maybe they saw their kid murder their husband. And so they just came here to try to start over. There were three women here. Uh, all three of them were forced to kill their husbands. And what happened was the rebels would come down and they'd capture families and they'd give a machete to a, a woman and say, either you kill your husband or your whole families die. And husbands would tell their wives to kill them. And, you know, when they came here, there was a tremendous amount of trauma in their life. To go to school in Uganda, you have to own a uniform, which a school uniform cost about $3.75. Then a little girl had gone to her mother and said, Mom, I want to go to school. And her mother said, honey, we don't have any money. I can't get you a uniform, but she really wanted to go to school. And finally, one day the mother thought, well, if I go out and I cut down some bamboos, I can sell those bamboos and I'll get my daughter a uniform. And so she went out to cut down some bamboos and they were intercepted by LRA rebels and the mother was shot six times and killed. And as I'm talking to this little girl, she starts to cry and she says, I think I killed my mom, I think I killed my mom. And I go, honey, you're, you didn't kill your mom, evil men killed your mother. Your mother was just trying to be a good mom. So out of that, we started the Love Covers Project. Every child gets a school uniform, they get play clothes, they get school supplies. The hope was that no mother would lose her life in the process of trying to allow her child to go to school. So that's how Love Covers got started. I saw them fall in love with Jesus. I saw ladies that were willing to confess their sin. They just wanted freedom. They wanted to know what it was like to have their lives built on something that could weather the kind of storms that obviously have happened to people who've been at war for 23 years. So when they start to really understand Christianity and be touched by God's healing, by His ability to change their attitudes and behaviors. It's amazing for them. They, they feel like they've been touched by a miracle, and they have. Here, at where we're at right now in Masindi, Uganda, We've set up tailoring schools with uh, uh, Richard and Susan. And the ladies come and they learn to tailor and they tailor the uniforms and they do that for free. And then at the end of the school, they're given their tailoring machine, their sewing machine, and they're able to make a living for themselves and income. And so uh, Biggie's done the project both in uh, Sudan and Northern Uganda. Giving the women a skill and a job and a way to support their families, it's huge and they've radically changed. Now we have women who were part of our first love covers over 10 years ago, and they still sew every single time we have an outreach because they want to be part of it. So the school here is designed for two purposes. One is to be a blessing to the uh, people here in Uganda, to bless the community here, but also all of our chaplains that are in the war in Southern Sudan, uh, they're away from their families often for a year before seeing them. There's very few schools in Sudan, uh, not a lot of safety there. I know just last year one of our chaplains was out at the front line and word came that uh, his village had been overrun. And he immediately went out to find his family and he was out in the bush for almost two weeks. And then he found his wife and their children somewhere hiding under a tree. And they'd been without food for almost two weeks. and. And so we wanted to have a place where their children could come and live safely. They would not have to worry about their uh, homes being overrun. 
the place to send them where they can educate them, and this is designed to do that. This is actually not just a Christian community. There's a large Islamic population here, and even the Muslim people understood that they would be sending their kids to Christian schools being taught Christian values, but they were absolutely okay with it as long as their children were getting an education. And we've had a good relationship with them. We're trying to reach them with the love of Christ, and uh, that's always the first approach you take. The entire community showed up to greet us here. There was probably close to a thousand people here at one point in the day when we arrived. They were here to greet us and thank us for the building of the school. And uh, I just think it's part of God's plan. Uh, children need to have a strong foundation in Christ. And we want these kids to have an extremely strong moral compass to understand right and wrong and to be able to uh, live lives that are productive for the gospel. These women, they're free in Christ, and they just can't wait for heaven. They talk about it all the time. They have children that they've lost that they want to meet, and they realize that they could change an entire generation. They could train their kids to have a fear of God and to grow up wanting to live in a way that's pleasing Him. And I love sharing about Jesus. He did such a radical work in my life. I'm happy to talk to them about it, to encourage them. And to me, this is a grand adventure.